Hey guys, in this video we're going to create a Chef cookbook to provision a basic web server. Uh, we'll play with some of the most commonly used resources in Chef. So let's get started. So first let's create a folder that we can use to, to put all our code. Uh, in the previous video, um, we ran Chef Client in, in local mode to process a single recipe in a file, but that's not how you usually use Chef in production. Uh, basically, the Chef code is is usually packed in cookbooks. Uh, cookbooks are basically what provides structure to the Chef code and includes all the different elements of the framework like templates, attributes, roles, files, etc. So the first thing we need to do is to generate the, the chef repo dir. So let's run chef generate repo chef. This last part here is the is the name of the of the folder we are going to create. So if you want to see the different options or the different generators are uh, provided by Chef, you can run this command. As you can see, there's um, there's there's a basically a generator for every uh, element of the Chef framework, like application. Application is is a repo very similar to the to this one to repo but it's it's usually recommended to use repo because this is the the basically like the latest um, format for or the structure for for share repo basically this one is for using just one cookbook and this one is for many cookbooks um so yeah there's one for there's a generator for cookbook there's another one for recipes, attributes, templates, yeah, anything you you want to uh, create in, in the in the chef cookbook. So we are gonna create a a chef repo. So let's run the command I was doing before. Chef generate repo and the folder will be called chef. So we should have just one folder and it's the structure for the for the chef repo. Uh, as you can see here we have uh, some chef generate some basic uh, files that we we can use license readme uh, chef is not ignore this is basically like a gig ignore so anything you put here will be basically ignored when you commit the code to, to the chef server, when you push the code to the chef server. Um, and here there are some, even some samples cookbook. Uh, I like to, I will remove these folders because this can basically create some confusion. Let's remove this the examples chef cookbooks data box uh, environments sample and roles okay it should be a lot cleaner now um, so the next step is to generate the chef cookbook, the, the new cookbook that we are going to use. Chef generate cookbook web server. This, this last part is the path to the, the path and the name we want to give to the cookbook. In this case, uh, we are going to create a, a web server cookbook. So let's run this. Okay, 
and as we can see here we have another folder called web server and in this folder we have all these different files that Je chef generates uh, berks file is is the is the file used for for berks berks is the is the um, dependency management for for chef for basically using uh, community cookbooks and uh, the usual license the readme and everything is here this uh, uh, here there's a default recipe um, and we have these two years that are basically ignore when you these are basically just for lock and development these deers are basically not when you push the code to the to the chef server um, so the next step is to generate our recipe so let's run chef generate recipe chef cookbooks this is the path to the cookbook and the last part is the name of the recipe in this case we are going to create a, a recipe for apache and as you can see here we have a new file here called apache so let's open that file let's actually check what is in the default um, recipe basically it's like it's an empty recipe so let's open the web server the apache recipe that we just generated okay so in this recipe we will we are gonna put all the code related to apache and setting up the web server um so the first thing i'm gonna do is use the package resource and install apache 2 this is the the package name for for ubuntu i can remove this and use just one line so it looks cleaner so next let's see if we can apply this uh, this cookbook and this recipe to to a background virtual box virtual machine sorry um, let's go to the terminal so let's generate a new background file So as we saw in the previous video, this is basically a, a, an Ubuntu uh, mach virtual machine that we are going to use, and it's provided by Bento. This will generate the background file. So let's open that background file we just created. So I'm gonna clear, clean this up, removing I'm going to remove all these comments here. Skip this this line here. So as we saw in the previous video, this part here is the one that redirects the the traffic from the 8080 port in the host machines in this in the in your computer to the guest machine that is the virtual machine in the port 80. So basically allows you to see whatever you have in the in the virtual machine running, uh, the web server you're running uh, using your 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 browser. 
And so let's, the last part we need that we didn't do before in the previous video is use chef to provision the machine instead of just uh, installing chef manually in the, in the virtual machine. So first let's provide these parameters for chef. This one here is the is basically the repo path as, as the name says. We are going we are we are using a folder called chef, so that's the name there. And we will use something called chef solo. That is the tool provided by chef to to run um, to run chef chef client without using a chef server. Um, so in, in the inside this block, we need to provide some different uh, parameters for for Chef Solo. The first one is the the data box path. Um, the second one is the uh, environment path. Next, we will provide the roles path. And the last one is the cookbooks path. Um, after we provide all these paths, um, the next thing we we do is to to uh, set up our run list. It's basically what give, what tells Chef what what we want to run, what recipe we want to run in the node, or what uh, role we want to run in the node. So let's provide that information here. This is the. This is where we put the recipe name. In this case, is web server, the cookbook name. And the recipe will be called Apache. If we just put the cookbook name, it will basically use the default recipe. So there are many ways to do that. Also, we, can, we could say here, we, we want to run a, a role instead of a recipe. But in this case, we're just going to, to run this, this Apache recipe. So after we created this basic background file, we can now boot up the machine. So as we can see here, um, Apache was installed, the package for Ubuntu. So Chef Client Reports 101 Resources was updated. So this looks, this looks correct. We can check that out in the browser. And we can see the default uh, Apache two pages here. So this work. So now that we have uh, this Apache page, let's do another thing. Let's create a new, uh, a new page that we can manage with Chef. And for that, we are gonna create a, a new template. Uh, we will use the generator, chef generate template. Back to the cookbook. 
and the name will be index.html okay so as you can see here um, chef generates the template with this uh, extension this is an embedded ruby file and this is what chef uses for creating templates so now let's open up that file in vi it's basically just an empty file but chef generates these templates there for us because it wasn't there before Okay, so let's create a simple HTML file. Say this page was generated by Chef. Um, we can remove this. So let me just paste some style sheet here. It's just some basic style and let's create a new h1 tag so now that we ha we have this template let's open the the Apache recipe and we can use this template um, using a resource called template and this resource takes the path to the template to the to the file we want to create here We need to provide chef the name of the template we want to use. In this case, is index.html.erb. And we need to provide an owner. I can say this will be owned by root. And the mode can be sys44. So let's try to run this. So to apply this change that we just did to to the background box, to the background virtual machine, we need to use an option called provision. And the reload is is the is the command we use to shut down the virtual machine and boot up boot the virtual machine up again. So we can see here Chef applied the change in this div. So let's check that out in the browser. And we can see our message here. So now let's try another resource. This one is called directory. This resource allow, allow us to, to create a new folder or a new deer. In this case, I'm, I want to create a new deer called images. Basically the same, I can use the same mode and I, will, I want this uh, folder to be on, no, I probably want to use 755 because this is a directory and I can tell uh, chef that if the 
if, if some of the folders here don't, don't exist, then we want to create them. We use this recursive mode equals to true. So in this folder, I want to create a new uh, a new image. So I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna use a new resource called remote file. So this file will be the the rig image you saw when and at the beginning of the video. So let me copy and paste the URL here. And the owner can be the same Apache user and group and C four four. So let's try it. Let's try this. Big run reload provision. Okay, so we can see here Chef created the the image called rig.gif. And also create the images folder. So this looks correct. So that means we can use this this file in our uh, template now. We obviously we could you use the the URL directly instead of downloading the file, but I just want to I just wanted to to show you how it works, how the remote file resource works. Okay, so let's reload again. So as we can see here, Chef added this tag, this image tag to the to the file, to the index.html file. So let's check that out on the browser. And it looks correct. We can see Rick dancing. So now let's try one more thing. Chef accepts uh, the template resource accepts uh, variables or parameters. So, so let's try to pass some things to the to the template. This is very common when when you want to to reuse a template with different parameters. Uh, <clears throat> so one more thing here. Um, there's there there are some attributes uh, that Chef um, set up for us in the in the in the node. This there's a there's a tool called Ohai that is used by Chef when when you run the the Chef client. That tool basically gathers uh, a lot of information from the server or from the node, like the the platform, the 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 version of the operating system, the CPU, uh, memory. So there's a lot of information we can see here. If we run that tool in from the from the virtual machine, you can see here all the different information we can see. There's a lot, so let's try to go to the beginning. Uh, we can see here the kernel, the release version, OS, etc. 
All this information can be used in 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 our in our chef code. Uh, for example, if we if we are using um, a Red Hat distro, we can check that. So instead of using the Apache two package name, we will use HTTPD because that's the name of the package for Apache is on on Red Hat or CentOS or on any other Red Hat based distro. So that information is basically there for, for us to be used. So in this case, I'm just gonna plus pass a new uh, parameter called platform. And the way you can access that information is using the node, the no these node attributes here. And you can use platform. That's a. That's how it's the that's the name there. You can query this uh, this information like this. So this returns the the JSON with that information. Or high platform. And the other is the version. And another one. I want to use is the address, the IP. So let's pass those through those three parameters to the template. Okay, so now let's use these parameters in the template. Let's create a new uh, a new tag H two. Uh, let's bolt platform. And the way we can print those, those those parameters is using this tag. Less than ampersand signed, and this one is to to print the the information from the, from the from the variable. So now we have the platform, the same for the version, and the last one will be the IP. Okay, so now let's try to apply this to the virtual machine. So it seems that this work, we can see here the new information. So let's check that out in the browser. And we can see the information here. So that means that it worked. So if you want to find more information for any, any, any resource that you want to use, for example, let's try to to see what what are the what is the documentation for a template resource. You can go to the documentation to the docs.chef.io site and can check the syntax and all the different uh, properties for this resource. Usually, you just use the the ones that are using the in the Apache recipe, but sometimes you, when you are working with templates, use templates for use for managing configuration files. Um, um, most of the time, you want to notify a service to restart. 
so that's why we have these notifies here we'll see that later in another video how to notify another uh, resource to, to do something so I think that's it for this video if this video was useful please leave your like and subscribe for more videos thanks for watching